All right, welcome back. It is almost time for half number two. Pat Donovan, Bill Gramatica here. As uh, Let's see, is this a special report? We don't have this guy's uh, volume, though, so we'll just let you look at him and uh, pretend that it's a uh, like a Chinese movie back in the day, one of those old kung fu flicks. You can look at him and listen to us. Uh, but I'll tell you what, what a first half of play. Very exciting first half. It was the B.J. Knopf show for the... Uh, Crimson Hawks and for a brief time it was the Alan Barnes show for Cavalry Christian but unfortunately Barnes looks like he's done for the night hopefully not for longer than that though because uh, you know he's gonna be very excited is that him running out to play now wow Alan Barnes looks like he's coming out here unless he's just coming out uh, to talk to his teammates but he's got a helmet on so you never know you just never know you know the type of athlete he is you know the coach may want to keep him on the sidelines uh, and it looks like he may be, uh, you know, done for the day, but uh, he sure didn't want to, that's for sure. I think if you leave it up to him, uh, he'd be playing at halftime. Yeah, and I certainly would not leave it up to him if I'm his coach. I'd say, hey, I know it's our first game here at The Rock. I know we've got this brand-new, beautiful facility, but don't you want to play here when it counts? That's what the coach is thinking. If you're a player, though, there, uh, there's really nothing that could happen uh, they could do to keep me off the field. Um, they're going to have to hide his helmet, maybe his shoes, something. But, um, you know, he still has his helmet on, and uh, he's ready to play. And you can see the view around some of the brand-new beautiful facility here. They've got kettle corn. They've got – I thought we – weren't we promised some barbecue? As a matter of fact, we're not going to have to we, – we we, we're not going to mention those guys. Somebody said they were going to bring us some barbecue. They've got some barbecue down here. If you're in the building, try it out, even though they forgot to bring me and Bill some. Uh, but – I'll tell you what, if you, like I'd said earlier, if you told me after quarter number one that quarter number two would be scoreless, I would have told you you were crazy. An unbelievable turnaround from quarter one to quarter two. Yeah, what a great turnaround. You know, I mean, the defense really did step up. We know we had the injury of the quarterback, but, uh, you know, I, we'll wait and see. I think there's going to be a combination of both maybe in the second half. Yeah, we'll have to see if B.J. Kanoff is done at quarterback as well because – uh, despite him being dominant there. This is preseason, and they want to get a look at some of the other guys on the squad. And we got a bit of a look at Nick Martinez, who kind of struggled in the first half, especially while trying to throw the ball. So I have to wonder if uh, you know they're going to they're look to throw the ball more with him or keep it on the ground or maybe even go back to Kanoff. Yeah, you know, uh, I tell you what, he didn't make a lot of plays out there, Nick didn't, but uh, he does throw throws a tight spiral, uh, a little bit short, but you know he may have a better spiral than B.J. Kanoff. Uh, you know, athletically, though, B.J. is uh, by far probably their best, a best athlete right now. I think we're getting ready to kick off. Their, the Calvary is uh, line, or their, I guess, game planning right now, getting ready to break down and uh, getting ready for the second half. And an exciting second half it'll be. And again, the second half, just like the first half in all of our broadcasts here on Tampa Live Sports, brought to you by Eaton Orthopedics. At Eaton Orthopedics, you can get treated like a pro. Dr. Doug Carlin and Dr. Coco Eaton specialize in sports injuries, hand injuries, and also arthritis. If you had any of those ailments, you'd be crazy to see anybody but the guys at Eaton Orthopedics. Of course, Coco Eaton, as I've told you before, is the orthopedic surgeon of our Tampa Bay Rays. And if he's good enough for the Rays and all their multi-million dollar investments, certainly... Good enough for the rest of us as well. Their website, again, is EatonOrtho.com. At Eaton Orthopedics, you can get treated like a pro. All right, so our, this is our other game here. Ke oh, no, Shorecrest is what we were doing. Uh, Keswick is up at the half, 7-6, to six, and what must be a close one against uh, Florida Christian there. Uh, also, it's 28-6 to six at the half for defending state champion Jefferson. And uh, we'll tell you some more as they roll in here. By the way, we're looking for score updaters. We're going to have a live scoreboard all season long on Tampa Live Sports. Try to update you as much as possible. So if you want to be part of that, you can email us at scores at TampaLiveSports.com. It's Barnes around the left. And he's across the 40 at about the 42 is Derek Barnes. And it'll be good starting field position here for the Calvary Christian Warriors in half number two. You know, the two returners had a little breakdown in communication, not sure which one was going to block and which one was going to catch the ball. They let the ball hit the ground. And, you know, oftentimes what happens there is the uh, 
the uh, kickoff team loses focus. They, they come, come out of their lanes thinking that it's a live ball. They all try to squeeze down going towards the ball, and they left a big hole on the left side to let them gain about 35 yards. Yeah, it looked like it was not going to start well, as you see there. And then over to the left is Barnes, and now we'll go back to live action. Two receivers to the right, and it's going to be a handoff up the gut, and a big hit after no gain. A big tackle on the play by B.J. Kanoff doing it again, not just on offense, but on defense there. And look who's back at quarterback for the Cavalry Christian Warriors. It is Alan Barnes back in the game. How about the toughness of that kid? We thought he was hurt seriously at the end of that first half. I think everybody, even the opposing team, counted him out of the game today, t getting taken out by you know golf cart. He's got a heavily taped uh, left ankle, but uh, like I said earlier, you know when you're an athlete like that, he's a competitor. I don't think there's anything that's going to keep him off this field. Yeah, certainly showing a lot of toughness and uh, a little bit surprised that they've got him back out there in a preseason game. But, uh, you know, we said it earlier. This is a big day for Cavalry Christian opening up this brand new stadium, and, and they obviously want to win. Barnes keeps it himself this time, cannot get away, does get away. Oh, and they're going to call him in the grasp, though. And uh, probably, and I don't, I don't know about you, Bill, my, one of my least favorite rules in football is in the grasp. Look, I understand guys get hurt from time to time. Let them have an opportunity to make a play. Well, and not only that, but, you know, if the quarterback wants to go down, he can go down. So if he's wanting to try to fight that yeah. tackle, let him do it. If he's going to get hurt, then, you know, it's up to the quarterback. But let him make that decision because he was going to break out of that tackle and he might still be running. Yeah, it used to be down by contact. Remember, you, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't challenge that back in the day. That was, that was it for me. But now it's in the grasp, absolutely my, my least favorite rule in the NFL or in any level. And here we go, Barnes to Barnes, and it's broken up on the sideline. Good play there defensively by Justin Lucas, and that'll be incomplete and bring up a fourth down here for the Warriors. Oh, we got a penalty on the play. Oh, laundry in the backfield, and where that is, you're going to assume it's going to be a hold on the offense or perhaps it could be a late hit, you know, late hit or roughing the passer, but it's generally one of those where that flag has been thrown. It's it's generally a defensive penalty against somebody, like you said, roughing the passer, or uh, and that looks like what it's going to be because they're moving the ball forward. Yeah, they got to stay focused right there. You know, you're you're getting these, you know, you're getting Barnes off the field. You get fourth, you know, fourth down, and uh, and someone goes and hits the quarterback. So. Um, you got to be smart, smarter than that and make sure that, you know, once you've got a chance to go out there and rest your defense, uh, you got to make that happen. So it's first down now after the big penalty on fourth or on third, which would have led to a fourth. Pat, that's actually almost like a turnover right there, you know, because they would have had the ball right now. Yeah, exactly. And this time Barnes does give it off up the middle and – Gaining just a few yards on the play is going to be uh, Heath Heatherly. It's obvious that uh, that Barnes has uh, got a you know an ankle problem there because he's just not the same quarterback. Uh, we can't question his toughness, but you know uh, I could probably guarantee that it's going to be tougher for him to cut left with that. Uh, that heavily taped left ankle. If you're just tuning in again, Pat Donovan here with Bill Gramatica calling the action. We're tied at 27 after 27 points put up by each team in the first and then nothing in quarter number two. And that's a fumble by Barnes. It's on the ground, and it looks like yes, and that's going to be Nick Martinez. Martinez, who's played some quarterback, getting the ball there on the loose ball and just trying to make something happen. And, Maybe he'll try to make too much happen on that play was Barnes, and he lost the ball, and it's going to be Hawks football. Well, that was a smart play by Martinez to kind of uh, diagnose the situation. He saw there was going to be a pitch and uh, stuck his arm out there, it looks like, and knocked the ball down and be able to recover that fumble. That was a great play. Uh, you know, I said earlier it looked like a turnover for Ruff and the quarterback. Uh, that's a way, great play to get your, uh, your offense back on the field. Yeah, Martinez picking up his team after that big penalty and now it's going to be first down and 10 at the 47 of the Warriors here for the Hawks. Martinez lined up at quarterback now. It is Martinez, and he almost, and he does walk right into three defenders for the Warriors, and he's going to lose almost five yards, and that'll bring up 
second down, and it looks like it is uh, second down and 14 after the big loss on that one. He just turned right into three Warrior defenders. Now you can tell that's preseason football breakdown in communication. It looked like uh, uh, Martinez wanted to pitch it to B.J. Knuff. Might have been a trick play. And uh, B.J. looked like he, uh, you know, thought that Martinez was actually going to run the ball because uh, the, I don't think he was looking at him. Now, we actually do have a rule here, Bill, on Tampa Live Sports. Anytime you say communication breakdown, you actually have to sing Led Zeppelin right afterwards. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Man, I was going to see. Trying to give you the, the rookie hazing here a little bit, and uh, I couldn't pull it off. I would haze you guys if you had to hear me sing. <laughs> Second down, 14 here from the 50. And a lot of pressure on Martinez again, and he's going to go down with a big sack and a huge loss there. It's going to be third down and about 600 yards. All right, third and, let's see, 20, 30, wow. It looks like they're trying to put B.J. Knopf in different other positions just to, to practice right now for a preseason game, but uh, it's really going the wrong way, so I'm not sure. They, they need to get the ball more to the to, um, their receiver number two to uh, to go out there and try to make some plays. That's the only play that's going to give them a first down right now. And we see a lot of good decision makers at, at this high school level and a lot of good football. I'd say if there's one thing we, we do see a lack of is guys knowing how to get out of the pocket and get rid of the ball when they've got nothing there. Two receivers to each side now. Back in the backfield, shotgun. Martinez again steps up in the pocket. This time he's got himself some room off the right side. But a big tackle down at the 36-yard line by the big feller, number nine, Matt Ankrum. And that will bring up fourth and very long. And I'm sure we'll see a punt here. And the third quarter starting to look a little bit like the second. All of a sudden what was an offensive display in quarter number one has become quite a defensive battle. You know, Matt Ankrum had some great closing speed. It looked like Nick Martinez was wide open. I don't know if he would have gotten a first down, but he was certainly going to get a lot more yardage. And uh, he just came in close in no time, grabbed onto him in an open field tackle and, uh, and got him for, uh, for a fourth down. Fourth down and about 20 yards. We'll call it 19. At least that's what's on the scoreboard here. And here comes the punt. And that is going to come down out of bounds, probably around the 40-yard line. We'll see. A oh, very nice spot there by the official, at least. I, well, now he's walking it up closer to the 40, and he will call it down at the 41-and-a-half-yard line of the Warriors, and that's where they'll start with their second possession here of half number two. Just over six-and-a-half minutes left on the clock in the third. We're still tied at 27 as we were at the end of quarter number one. Never would have thought that. I mean, no. uh, the way the offensive were playing. But, you know, I mean, that's a... Uh, you know, first game of the year, uh, trying to get things squared away, and it looks like the defenses are actually stepping up now, and, uh, you know, we're starting to get some uh, some good football now. Again, you're watching the first football broadcast of the year here on TampaLiveSports.com here on Live Channel 1. It is the Cavalry Christian Warriors taking on the Santa Fe Crimson Hawks. First game of the season, first game ever here at The Rock, the brand-new beautiful facility at Cavalry Christian. Uh, we've also got on Channel 2 the Shorecrest Chargers as they are taking on Someone we cannot remember. I apologize. If I were there, I would certainly know. Cambridge Christian over there at Shorecrest, and we'll be uh, certainly at Shorecrest plenty this year. I would suspect we'd be back here at Cavalry Christian. Very impressed with this whole facility. And, uh, you know, you, you've seen our broadcast. They're very good. But the, the level of broadcast here with these guys, and, and these kids are just doing a great job. And uh, hopefully our boy Dylan here can get us uh, some names before the end of this one so we can give all these guys some credit. But here we go. Time for the punt. And even with that gimpy ankle, I believe that is Alan Barnes back to receiver. Is that his brother, Derek? It looks like it's his brother. It must have been it a uh, penalty in the last play. They're punting again. 
Oh, that's and if he that's doesn't. A that's nice gonna be line a roll, drive nice punt. Roll, though. Yeah, bounced right into his hands there. Very returnable kick. Barnes to the left, gets outside. He's got room to the 25. He's got a man to beat, cannot do it, but he's down inside the 20 and about the 18-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Cavalry Christian Warriors. And we may see our first score here in over a quarter, and a, almost a quarter and a half. Yeah, that was a tough line drive punt. Gave Barnes all the room in the world to kind of pick and choose which way he wanted to go. Uh, kind of let the let his return team set up a wall for him, and he just cruised down the sideline. Uh, punter made a great tackle, but uh, you know the punt was kind of low, and and kind of gave Barnes the opportunity to return it all the way down there. And I gave Barnes a couple free yards, so it's actually going to be third down, I mean, first down and ten from the twenty, not the eighteen. And uh, our, our guy Brent Lartz here showing me. Cambridge, Christian, and Shorecrest on his cell phone. They're tied at 28 in quarter number three. So how about a first weekend of broadcasting here on TampaLiveSports.com. Tied at 27 here at Cavalry Christian. Tied at 28 over at Shorecrest. If I'm you, I'm hoping you got a computer with two screens so you can be watching both of these great games here on your home for live streaming sports in Tampa Bay, TLSTV.com. Looks like they got their mandatory water break again. Uh, we were talking earlier. You know, I was going to tell you we were uh, the USF um, sports medicine uh, group were running a uh, doing a study of uh, of players and, and and heat exhaustions and injuries. You know, I mean, I've, there's a lot of players that actually some players that have died from that. Yeah. So um, Steve Walls out there, the trainers uh, over at the USF football, actually, there's a pill that they, they give the linemen. Uh, at night before they go to bed and it actually checks it's, it's got a little module with a thermometer wow and all Steve does is he walks by the players and scans them and it gives you the inner temperature um, their heartbeat it gives them all this information to keep the player safe Barnes is gonna keep it to the right now cuts it back inside he's inside the 10 down at about the four yard line but we do have a penalty on the play and it's right in that area again where you might see a hold yeah, that one, it, since it wasn't a pass, this guy it looks like it's going to be a hold right there. It was such un unfortunate because it looked like Barnes was already well on his way to get that first down when, when uh, it looks like the hole uh, occurred. So that was a tough play by them. Uh, Bill, as a USF alum, what, what is it like for you to look at how this program has come from when you were part of the team to you know, where they are today? They've really grown by leaps and bounds. and. Skip Holtz now there doing a heck of a job. Yeah, and they're projected to win the Big East this year, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be going to a few of the away games, obviously the home games. You know, and it's just great what USF is doing right now. Uh, started when, you know, I, I knew Coach Levitt recruited Martin out of Kansas State, and so uh, came out here before the trailers even were out there for their football facility. I remember when Coach Levitt uh, slept like three or four days on his practice field because they hadn't finished the fences wow. and didn't want anybody to ruin them to uh, to the multi-million dollar facility that they have now in such a short period of time. It's just amazing what they have done. Barnes looks to throw. That one's going to be a little short as he was under pressure and he's brought down on the throw and uh, getting up a little bit slowly, but... Uh, and yeah, a little bit gimpy there as well, but who knows? You never know. It could be a little bit of the Jim Brown treatment there. You know, you remember Jim Brown always said, I got up slow after every play because then they never knew when they really hurt you. Yeah, that's a good point. But this one looks like, uh, yeah. you know, it looks like Matt um, Strambrowski put some pressure on him. You know, you put some pressure on these quarterbacks, especially with a bum ankle. Um, it's going to make it a lot harder for him to throw. He threw that ball out of his back foot. Had a wide open receiver, but just couldn't get it to him. Just really close play, though. So second down now, about 20 yards. And Barnes takes the snap out of the shotgun. He's rolling to his left. He's under a lot of pressure, and this time he's just going to hurl it up there, and it's going to be picked off. A terrible decision this time by Allen Barnes, and it's going to be intercepted by number 11, Nick Martinez. And we're saying Martinez's name on defense just as much as we are on offense. You know, Nick Martinez made a great play, but the, the story in this play is uh, Barnes is down again. This now looks like either a, a shoulder or an elbow injury. Uh, you know, if I was a coach right now, if he's not done for the game, I'd make him be done because uh, if this game's not going to count, um, you're, this quarterback's going to not make it to the end of the game. Yeah, he's tough, and I'm sure even if he can, he'd like to get back out there. But you've you got to get him out of there because 
you know, it, it's a big night here. They're, they're very excited about this new facility. They obviously want to win this game, but it's not more important than the regular season and having Allen Barnes out there, especially when you're talking about a rookie backup quarterback in Jeremy Wood. And that's not to say Wood can't get it done, but, I mean, the kid's a freshman in high school. I mean, you really want Barnes out there if you can have him. You can't let him back in tonight's game. You just can't. No, there's no way that I would let him back. Uh, you know, he's obviously he's not even moving right now. Um, you got to get the freshman in there. I know it's tough for him, but um, if you're going to get any snaps, you might as well get him in today that, you know, you can make your mistakes today and they're not really going to count for your record. Obviously, um, they're going to count for the quarterback, and uh, he's got to get out there and get some experience because, um, you know, if Barnes doesn't get hurt today, the way he plays and the, and the playmaker he is, uh, it's tough for him to last the entire season when you're, you know, basically a one-man team right now. And, uh, you know, the defense is going to be gunning for you. Yeah, and, you know, we've seen uh, at every level of football a lot of versatile and athletic quarterbacks, but uh, J you don't see Jeff Garcia all that often. You don't see Randall Cunningham all that often. You don't see a lot of these guys that are that versatile and that athletic stick in the league because it's just so hard to stay healthy when you're that kind of a quarterback. You're absolutely right. You know, I mean, it's just a matter of time that uh, you're just one play away. If you're, uh, if you're a passing quarterback, you know, you're staying in the pocket. If it's not there, you're not going to see Peyton Manning run for 20, 30 yards very often. So he knows if it's not there, uh, throw it out of bounds. You know, an incomplete pass, uh, it's not the worst thing that could happen. Uh, you know, this right here, you know, getting yourself hurt, waiting for the last second, throwing an interception, and getting yourself hurt, um, you know, just – you throw it out of bounds, man. That's the best play that, that he could do right now. Yeah, absolutely. And you see right now, if you're watching, that is Jeremy Wood. Well, it was, was for a second there. They panned away, but that was Jeremy Wood, freshman quarterback. Uh, we saw him for a few plays uh, at the end of the first half after the injury to Barnes. And I, I would suspect we'll be seeing him the rest of the way out this time. Regardless of what's wrong with Barnes, you cannot continue to let him stay out there and, get a, and take a beating like he is right now in preseason. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to, to get him up, but, um, you know, we can't really see what the injury is, but it seemed like it was either a shoulder, uh, maybe an elbow. Who knows, maybe a head, you know. I mean, with all the concussions going on, uh, another thing about field turf, you know, it's a lot harder than grass. Uh, it's a lot better than national turf, but it still hurts when your helmet hits that, that turf. So uh, it could be all of those injuries, but like you said, uh, if I was the coach, I wouldn't let – I'd grab his helmet like the trainer just did and keep walking to the locker room. Yeah, and of course, uh, while we do have a split second here, while we're waiting for the injured Allen Barnes, hopefully, and, and, and we see some clapping going on, they're going to get him off the field. And what a tough kid. But I want to talk about uh, some other things we're excited about here. Not just very excited to have added Bill Gramatica to our broadcast crew. We've also added Derek Sharp from 620 WDAE. And starting next Friday, before the games come on, you'll see Derek Sharp host our weekly football high school football focus show. And uh, he'll tell you about all the things going on around around every district in the high school one hour every Friday at 5.30 before each of the two kickoffs here on Tampa Live Sports. You'll be able to catch Derek Sharp uh, bring you the high school football focus show. And then a couple hours later, Derek Sharp will call play-by-play -play on one of our games. And, of course, I'll be uh, on the other one. And it looks like uh, maybe it's a shoulder here. or uh, Interesting, he's reaching towards his – right shoulder there but it's his left arm that obviously looks like uh it's pretty injured you gotta wonder if it's dislocated the way that uh the young lady down there is holding his arm in place yeah and, uh i've had several dislocations and it's not fun and uh you know it, you really can't hold your arm up until uh some, you got to have someone help you uh until they pop it in and then uh once they do it should feel better and it looks like the trainer's going under the pad that he's trying to get that uh shoulder uh dislocation pop back in but uh, I would, I'm guessing that we're not going to see him. I'm hoping we don't see him again as much as, uh, as everybody else and everybody wants to see him make some plays. Um, he needs to stay on the sidelines the rest of the game. So first down and 10, Santa Fe football. We're still tied at 27 as we were at the end of the first. Handoff up the middle and a nice carry there. It's B.J. Kanoff now playing a little tailback. And picking up a nice five yards there on first down. He hit that hole really hard. He saw it open, didn't hesitate, and just hit it down for about six, seven-yard gain. Uh, that's the way you want to hit that hole. 
uh, right there. As soon as you see a gap, just take off, not give the defense time to adjust. Second down and a long three here for the Crimson Hawks. Ball at the 43-yard line. So as the season goes on, like I mentioned, we'll bring you at least two football games every Friday night as well as Derek Sharp's football focus, high school football focus show starting at 5.30 every Friday. It's Kanoff again right up the gut. Dragon tacklers, and he's got a first down close to the 49-yard line. That play, you got to give credit to the offensive line. Uh, they pushed the defensive line about four or five yards before they even touched them. Uh, B.J. Knuff just lowered his head and kept following those guys. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's good to see when you see people your own color and you just keep going without getting touched, man. Good play by the offensive line. First and 10. We'll call it the 48. Two receivers to the left. Two to the right. This time it's going to be Kanoff up the gut again, and again dragging, tack dragging tacklers, and just about two yards to bring up second down and eight. He drugged that guy about two or three yards right there, made it a, from a one-yard loss to about a two, two-and-a-half-yard gain. Uh, that was a great play by B.J. Kanoff. So the clock rolling under four minutes here in the third. We're still tied at 27. I don't think anybody could have predicted this kind of game here for the kickoff classic between Cavalry Christian and Santa Fe Catholic. Second down and eight. This time it's a play action. Martinez is in a lot of trouble, and this time he does the smart thing, gets outside the pocket, and throws the ball away. And I have to wonder if that was a horse collar. The only thing I can imagine, intentional grounding. I thought he was outside the pocket. And it looked like he got past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it really did look like. And, and it looked like the guy did tackle him with a horse collar. So, um, you know, you just got to wonder if uh, the referee was seeing that the guy was outside of the uh, tackles. But, you know, either way, um, like I said, we're, we're not as close to the action as yeah. the referee. So. Um, but the, the smart play by Nick Martinez was to get rid of that ball, uh, save him from getting hurt, and, um, you know, if he was a few yards further uh, down the sideline, then it would have just been an incomplete pass. And I wasn't sure if it was a horse, ta uh, horse collar tackle. It certainly looked like it could have been close, but I was not positive. But uh, I didn't think that it was uh, intentional grounding by any means. And, you know, the horse collar is such an interesting rule because what a lot of people don't realize is it's not just the action of getting that hand inside the collar, getting that hand inside the pads and bringing him down. It's also coming down on the back of his legs that completes that horse collar action. I, I kind of thought that one was close, but I wasn't sure. But, again, very surprised to see the intentional grounding. So third down now and very long. They're going to call it 19 yards. Three receivers to the left. Martinez is looking that way. He's going to throw it deep in a lot of traffic, and it'll come down incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down and long, and looks like another punting situation here for the Santa Fe Catholic Crimson Hawks. You know, when you're that far from a first down, I mean, that's the, the best thing you can do. You know, I mean, uh, you throw it, if they would have caught it, it would have been in first down. If it would have been intercepted, it, it would have been just like a punt. So smart play. Uh, it didn't work out. You know, I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen number two, the wide receiver, um, Serrano Crooks. I haven't seen him since the first quarter. Mm. Um, we gotta, they got to find a way to get him the ball because uh, if B.J. Knuff is not, run, if not playing quarterback, they got to find a way to get him the ball. And here comes the punt. And that's going to go out of bounds again. This is going to be probably close to the 45. It'll be very good field position. First down and 10 at their own 42, we'll call it, here for the Warriors. Will we see, uh, will we see Alan Barnes again, you think? <laughs> I think. 
I, I honestly hope not. Do I really hope? I really do. I Wait. just think that it, it, it's preseason. I know it's big for this community. I know they're very excited about this brand new facility, but he, I just don't think it's right. Yeah, he's got his pads taken off. There's a good chance he's not coming back. Yeah, and I'm glad. I really am. Sometimes it's just too much, and this time we've got some miscommunication in the backfield. The quarterback and the, I believe that's the fullback, actually, uh, Matt Ankrum, running into each other there, and it's going to be a loss of about half a yard. Now can we hear you sing now? I do, do believe you just said miscommunication. Oh, yeah, C miscommunication, not communication breakdown. See, gotcha. you got to you got to have the uh, Zeppelin. It's got to be just like the Zeppelin lyrics. Okay, so um. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> just cuz you've called some Super Bowls, Bill. <laughs> Does I not just, mean. I just can't remember. How <laughs> well, the thing was that Martin's called, like, I think he's called three or four, and I've called, like, three. So I can't remember how many he has. So, All right. You know, but. Um, Off to the right there, and uh, nothing going. Brought down for a loss, actually, on the play. Another good defensive stop, and it was Preston Jones with the carry there. And it's going to be third down and about 10 yards to go now. You know, I was watching, uh, I was watching Jeremy, Jeremy Wood throw on the sideline, and he's got a decent arm. You know, it's, uh, I think if they could try it right now, throw a long pass, maybe a play action, uh, you know, they could probably get, some, get a play made out here. Yeah, he struggled in the first half uh, throwing the ball, but let's not forget this is a freshman, and there's no such thing as a true freshman in high school like there is in college. This is a freshman. Oh, and the pitch back that time way behind, and just a smart play that time by Jones to cover it up and make sure that it wasn't uh, Preston Jones to cover it up and make sure that it was not a turnover, and it'll be time to punt once again. So after 54 first quarter points, we're still tied at 27 with a buck 13 left in quarter number three. Unbelievable turn of events. You know, the way it's going right now, it's going to end up probably being a defensive touchdown that's going to win this game because uh, I really don't see uh, the offense moving it, you know, far enough to even get to a field goal range right now. So um, it, it, you never know. It could be a fumble just like it just happened or, or interception return for a touchdown. But I, I think that this game's going to get turned around by the defense. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, and if you'd said that earlier in the game, I would have looked at you like you were nuts, but certainly the last two quarters has been all about defense after the first quarter was all offense, and uh, if, you're, if you're that defensive coordinator I was talking about in the first half, I don't know if, if you said anything at halftime, but you certainly did some things, and that punt goes straight up in the air and uh, bounces at about the 26, and it's picked up there by Kanoff, and he goes down the right side, and he dives into the end zone for a touchdown. B.J. Kanoff does it on another part of the field. We've seen him on offense. We've seen him on defense. Now a touchdown on special teams. That play, what a smart play by B.J. Kanoff. Uh, to catch that punt, it was a high bounce off of that short punt and just took it into the end zone. Uh, he did hurt himself on the dive. Not sure if he uh, pulled something or uh -oh. uh, twisted his knee, but, man, that is such a tough play by, uh, by B.J. Knuff. And he's down in pain. You see him holding that leg. and you got to wonder if maybe they're going to say, can you just stay on the ground, young man? Just stay on the ground. There's so many bad things that can happen when you put yourself up in the air like that. And I know, you know these kids see guys like Reggie Bush doing it. These kids see these guys jumping over and into the end zone like that, and they want to do it as well. But, you know, unfortunately, these are the type of things that can happen. What's good about this, what you're seeing here, obviously that's uh, how they work out a cramp. So hopefully that's all it is. That that's definitely uh, looks like a cramp, and we really hope that's the worst that could happen. But, you know, not a lot of good things happen when you jump and celebrate. Great carry, and Kanoff has absolutely been all over the football field for this team. And I'll tell you what, it, it better be a cramp because – the Crimson Hawks need Kanoff uh, to be successful, and that's been that's been pretty evident tonight. He has been uh, their best player, I believe, in all three phases of the game. No question. He is just a playmaker. He's done it on special teams, making a tackle earlier in the day, returning this for a touchdown. Uh, he's made it, he scored a touchdown on offense. 
uh, he's been all over the field, so we hope that it's just a cramp. And like we said earlier, it's so hot. It was so hot out there today, uh, first game of the season. You're excited. You're adrenaline. You know, I mean, you got to drink. You got to drink way before the start of the game. I mean, all day long at school, he should have been out there uh, just pounding the waters and electrolytes uh, because you're going to lose a lot of it during the game, especially as much as he's playing. Um, no question that uh, – it had to be a cramp because he's been all over the field. And, Bill, you brought up a great point as well. That wasn't just a punt return. That wasn't just, uh, you know, picking up a punt and bringing it back for a touchdown. Granted, it wasn't very long, but a heads-up play. Everybody obviously kind of standing around waiting for that thing to be downed. It took a high bounce, and Kanoff grabbed it and brought it down the right side for a touchdown. Yeah, more than anything, you know, he is a smart football player. Uh, anybody else that people are trying to run, get out of the way. Uh, and that's what you're taught to do, you know, when the ball's near you, you're taught to get out of the way. Uh, you could get pushed into it, turn it into a live ball, and B.J. Knuff was smart enough to catch that and take it all the way down the sideline for a touchdown. What a great play by B.J. Knuff. And here's the kick, and it is going to be no, no good. good. And that... Is 33 to 27 after the missed extra point. Our guy uh, running the clock for us tonight, Eric Hagland. We call him All American Eric Hagland. Doesn't this look like you know the guy you want your daughter to bring home? Uh, uh, you know when you do have that daughter, Bill. But All American Eric Hagland here puts his arms up for the good. Very tough in these high school press boxes to get a good angle on the uh, on the goalposts, and that's why I often wait uh, to see what the, what the officials do because I thought that wasn't as well, and sometimes it's just such a bad angle that you think it is, but. This time it was not. Hey, if you're calling them all good, I wish you were my referee when I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd still be out there kicking. <laughs> uh, if you just tuned in, that's Bill Grammatica <laughs> saying, I want Eric Hanglin under the goalposts while I'm kicking the ball because he calls them all good. But, uh, again, it's a tough angle up here from the press box. Sometimes it is tough to see. But the extra point, no good. The touchdown was another one for B.J. Kanoff, and he has the Crimson Hawks up 33-27, the first six points of the game since the first quarter of play. Now we just hope that, that was just a cramp and that uh, he'll be able to come back and, uh, and play in the fourth quarter. Uh, we hope it wasn't a pulled muscle, but everything looked like it was just uh, they were trying to get that cramp out. Yeah, as soon as I saw the, the, the trainer over there doing what he was doing, I said, oh, that's good, that's that's it's." very likely a cramp and sometimes it looks like a cramp it feels like a cramp and it's not but uh very likely was and we'll, and we'll hope to see more of Kanoff tonight because he's been very good unlike that kickoff which goes out of bounds and will give very good starting field position now to the Calvary Christian Warriors again as we said earlier that was not a good play but that's not the worst that could happen because the return team with Barnes out there that could catch the ball and take it to the house uh you know to start at the 40 it's not the worst that can happen, so um, not the best play. Could have been a touchback if uh, he would have kept it in bounds, but, um, you know, they'll take it. But, again, if he walks off the field and say, looking like, yeah, I meant to do that, we maybe think he did, right? You just never know. <laughs> so 15 seconds left on the clock here in the third, and we are at a 33-27 to 27 lead for the Santa Fe Crimson Hawks. So they're on top of the Cavalry Christian Warriors. Cavalry Christian football here. It's first down and 10 now from the 35. I thought it was the 42, but I guess that's the NFL rule. They give them five less here in high school, which is probably good. And this time a handoff up the gut goes maybe a yard or two, and that's going to be all for... Alex Leonard and that will be the end of quarter number three so the first half saw a ton of action and a ton of scoring at least the first quarter did it took almost two more quarters to get our next touchdown you said you thought it might come on defense it did come on special teams it certainly came in an unconventional way and it was a big play another big play by BJ Kanoff who has just done it all for this Hawks football team tonight you know, and like we were saying earlier, Pat, that, you know, special teams does play a, a great part in this football game and, and in every football game because the most yardage that's changeover is on special teams. So uh, BJ just had a smart play there. Uh, We've got to see if the uh, 
Calvary team can get out there and you know see what they see what the freshman defense can do today. And uh, you know I was giving some credit to our boy All American Eric Hagland over here for running our clock so well tonight. Uh, also a, a crack reporter coming in and letting us know B.J. Knopf on his way to Purdue. So uh, certainly a, a, a big-time prospect on his way to be a boiler maker. So uh, Eric Hagelin doing some crack reporting for us as well up here in the booth tonight. Well, I take it there are some college scouts here after all then, huh? Yeah, yeah I would think so, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, Purdue is going to have themselves uh, one heck of a ball player, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they decide to put Kanoff. I don't think he looks like a college quarterback to me, but I think uh, he certainly could be a heck of a tailback because, it, it, you know, he's one of those guys, he may not be big enough, fast enough to, to play uh, a skill position in the NFL looking at him from up here, but, you know, these are the kind of guys that can play a long time Steve Tasker like in the NFL on specials. And big play there for about eight yards. You know, going back to B.J. Knuff, though, you know, I do remember another Purdue quarterback that they always said wasn't tall enough, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I think he's been tearing up the NFL for a number of years right now. So, you know, I think Drew Brees is, might be two inches taller than him, might be six foot tall, but, um, you know, I'm sure that uh, Drew will go back in the off season and work out with some of these guys. And, you know, like you said, I don't think that B.J. is going to be a quarterback in college. But uh, there's a lot of different positions that I think about putting that guy at. Certainly. And, and, I, and I like him at tailback. I really do. Third down now and short here. They're going to hand it off up the middle. A nice gain there. Now cuts it outside to about the 45. Now the 40. He's going to be dragged down inside the 40 at about the 38-yard line with a first down. It's Alex Leonard again. And it's first down and 10 now for the Calvary Christian Warriors. And, you know, Bill, to what you were saying earlier about special teams being a big part of the game, some people don't think it is. Some people, they write off special teams. They don't, they, oh, yeah, yeah, special teams, whatever. Let's not forget, we've seen teams do very well specifically because of their special teams. But I think back to last year, you were talking about Drew Brees, his former team, the San Diego Chargers had the top offense in the NFL. They had the top defense in the NFL. They didn't make the playoffs because their special teams were so bad. Right, they had five punts blocked last year on special teams and made them lose like two or three games. So special teams is huge. And then they brought Rich Bisaccia here. For, they yep. brought him from the Buccaneers to change that. They have a great punter and a great kicker. But, if, you know, if you can't block, you know, you got the snapper and, and the punter. But if you can't block for him, there's no way he can get that ball off. And I do remember seeing a couple block for a touchdown. So uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, which uh, I believe it was the – the Oakland game early in the year, they had two blocked on, on consecutive punts, and that just, you know, that turned the whole game around, and that's why the Oakland Raiders beat the San Diego Chargers in that game. And, you know, we saw a team that was very good be sunk because of their special team. So if you don't think they're important, well, you're just wrong. Mm. Ask the San Diego Chargers. Yeah. First down and 10 now. Here's the pitch. Good hole over the right side, and it's quickly closed up, though. It'll be about three yards on the carry for Alex Leonard. And they're going to give him closer to four. That was borderline being a horse collar tackle right there. Got him by the neck and pulled him down. But, um, you know, it's a good tackle, though, nonetheless, and only for about a three-yard gain. Now they are moving him back. See, I thought about three. Then I looked, they looked like they were giving him five, and I'm like, oh, that's a nice spot. But Well, I just waited for him to put the ball down, so that's no, why I was more That's accurate. what the smart guys do. I just start winging it and throwing stuff out there. Fourth quarter of play, it's been a great first three. It's 33-27, Santa Fe Catholic on top of the Warriors here at Cavalry Christian. Just over 10 minutes left. Two receivers split out, and they're going to pitch it to the back. It looked like he might have had trouble handling it, and he lost the football, and it is recovered by B.J. Kanoff. And they're going to say he was down by contact. And they're lucky. I don't know. I mean, he, he's, BJ's kind of small to be a linebacker, but uh, the way he shot that gap and, and got the fumble, um, I guess I don't know where Purdue's going to play him. Yes. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Yeah, really. Keswick Christian now up 21-14 in the fourth quarter over Southwest Florida Christian. Here's the shotgun again. 
And a little miscommunication, but the quarterback brought down hard. His head slammed against the ground there. And uh, just a couple yards there for Jeremy Wood, and that will bring up a fourth down and about 10 yards here for Cavalry Christian. That was a great tackle by Robert Aranda. He just shot the gap and got the quarterback for, for no gain, or actually a, a loss on that play. So good play. I tell you what, the defense, uh, like you said, I, I wish I was uh, in one of these uh, – halftime speeches to see what these de defensive coordinators said to the players because they both really stepped it up and you know the quarterback getting hurt uh, doesn't d doesn't hurt that either for the yeah. defense but um, you know they really stepped up and are playing a great game today. Yeah, I said they wished it was two hand touch in the first quarter it looked so bad these both of these teams had so much trouble tackling it's been exactly the opposite of that sense and a bad snap on the punt and a punter brought down at the 30 yard line and it's going to be great field position after a big play from big number 55 it's Matt Strombrowski and he makes a big play and the Hawks will have great field position again with this with eight minutes left and well 809 actually on the clock here to start this drive and Cavalry Christian's got to come up with a big play here on defense yeah that was a tough play right there the punter didn't really have a chance uh, the ball rolled to him and uh, he tried breaking the tackle but uh, it's just a little too late and um and that was a tough play by them. You know, no sooner does Bill Gramatica bring up the importance of special teams than a huge special teams play is putting Santa Fe on the verge of a two-score lead. This is Martinez under center again. He's going to hand it off up the middle. Nice stick in the hole there. Kanoff with a couple of yards, but a great tackle on the play inside by big Alex Leonard. I realize I called all these kids big without even understanding how big they are. I just, you know, why not, right? <laughs> they all look big to me. Yeah. So that'll be second down now and about six yards. That was Ankrum on the tackle there. And if you're the Hawks now, you're certainly going to take your time because if you can run another three, four minutes off the clock and put this one in the end zone or even kick a field goal, you've got a two-score lead very late in this one. And it's a quarterback keeper off the left side. Gets away from one tackler. Won't go far, though, and he'll be dragged down. And good defensive pursuit there by Cavalry Christian, and it's going to be third down now and about five yards. You know, as long as that keep that clock keeps ticking, uh, those aren't bad plays because right now the way the offense is going for Cavalry Christian, uh, you know, it's going to make it hard for them to drive up, down all the way and uh, and try to score a touchdown. So they're going to try to keep that clock moving. Uh, third down, um, you know, I would definitely make sure that B.J. Kanoff gets this ball and try to get a first down and pretty much try to chew the end of this game, the clock away, uh, to finish this game out. It is Knopf back at the tail. Martinez is going to give it to him right up the gut. He drags a couple tacklers with him, but not for enough for a first down. It's going to bring up a fourth down, and we'll see where the spot is. I'll take the Bill Gramatica route here and, and, and be smart enough to wait. It's going to be fourth and very short. I didn't think he got quite that many yards. It's going to be just fourth and a yard here, and you got to think that they would try to pull this one out and go for it here on fourth down, unless they've got a lot of respect for their kicker because you don't see a lot of 42-yard field goals in high school. Yeah, it just looks like they're going to go for it. You know, it's, they're about, you know, two yards short, but with the way that the uh, – uh, that, that B.J. Knuff is running the ball right now. I think that the uh, Calvary defense is starting to get a little bit tired. They just got a, a timeout, get some water, but uh, I would definitely look to run the ball with B.J., maybe run it wide to the right, give him some field, uh, open field to take off and, and, you know, break one or two tackles for the first down. So it's our mandatory water break again here in the fourth quarter. Very important, especially here in the state of Florida where uh, we're, in, we're in a press box with air conditioning and uh, we're sweating pretty good up here. I'll tell you what, if you're down on that field wearing 15 pounds of pads and uh, running around hitting people, 
it, it's got to be it's got to be something else. I mean, you know, I, I grew up and played football and not at a very high level. As a matter of fact, very poorly uh, in Massachusetts, where we didn't deal with this kind of heat at any point, even during training camp. I mean, they're, they're just we did not deal with this kind of heat. So to see what these kids go through, uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Well, you know what? In training camp, when we were out in uh, when I was in Arizona. They'd weigh us in before practice and after, and there are some linemen that would lose 10 to 12 pounds per practice. Wow. So. And this time it is Kanoff up the gut. He's got the first down and more, and he'll be dragged down right around the 20-yard line with a first down and 10 for the Santa Fe Crimson Hawks. They'd actually wouldn't, uh, if a lineman would lose more than 12 pounds in the morning practice, they wouldn't let him practice in the afternoon. Good. So um, that's how serious they monitor that. Um, you just don't want uh, what happened to Corey Stringer in, uh, in Minnesota to happen yeah. to anybody else. So, you know, it's really, uh, you got to keep a close eye on it. But um, I think they're doing a good job now and with all the different, you know, electrolytes and all the, you know, uh, every, the, the mandatory timeouts and everything. Um, you know, I think they're trying to avoid that. So first down and 10, it's Kanoff at tail again. This time it's rolling to his right. Martinez, he's in trouble. He's got to get rid of it again. This time I think he's going to pull it again. And this time I believe it. Another intentional grounding call on Martinez. Don't know if I agreed with the first one. Certainly agree with this one. No question, no question. He should have thrown that earlier. You know, you got four guys coming at you. No chance to see or even look for an open wide receiver. Uh, just get rid of the ball or even take a sack. You know, you take a sack right now with 530, 526 lift on the, left on the clock. You know, you let that clock wind down another, you know, 20, 30 seconds uh, and then run, keep running the ball. But now that stops the clock. You lose it down. Um, just not a real smart play right there. Yeah, and he's got to uh, realize where his protection is. And, you know, that, that looked like an all-out blitz and certainly didn't have any time whatsoever. And he's got to find a way to get rid of that ball. Without intentionally grounding it, of course. So we're now at second down and a lot. 30. 30. They've got to get to the 11. They're on the 41. And it's very easy when it's round numbers like that for me, Bill. As long, you know, if it was like 17, I'd be up here for 20 minutes trying to figure it out. Second down and 30 now here. And this is uh, a very big opportunity for Cavalry Christian now. They were down at their own 20. Uh, and it looked very likely that Santa Fe could score, but now at third, second down and 30, uh, good opportunity here for Cavalry Christian to get the football back. Interesting play here. It's Kanoff. He's going to pick up about 10 of the 30 there and get down to the 21 on a carry off the right side. You know, if Cal Calvary's got three timeouts left, uh, you know, uh, you would think about when to start using them, maybe, you know, see what the next play is. But if they, uh, if they run the ball the next time, I would definitely think about maybe uh, burning one of the timeouts. Yeah. I think uh, if you can hold them to a fourth down, I might let it run down to the punt, and that, uh, that way I have those three just in case we can't score on the next drive, and we got to try to get them off the field three and out real quick for one last drive. Big play here, especially if you're with Cavalry Christian. It's third down and 20. From the 31-yard line. It's going to be a pitch to the left for, for Knopf. And a great play on the outside. That's number two. That's Julian Brody with a big play there for Cavalry Christian. That's going to bring up fourth down and about 19 yards here for Santa Fe. You know, like I said earlier, it's just so hard to tackle B.J. Knopf, you know, wide open. Open field tackle like he just did. And he was just aggressive and just attacked his feet and, uh, and didn't let any of the Jukes... Uh, trick him so he just got him by the foot and took him down what a great play and uh it's fourth down now yeah that's a that's a tough tackle to make you know i mean if you're not wrapping a guy up it's very easy to miss when you're trying to make that kind of tackle and uh a great play there again by uh julian brody you know look oh, for wow. on this field goal look for serrano crooks to take off i i really think that this uh it just seems to me a 47 yard field goal there? They're lined up for a field goal, but I'm thinking this is more of a fake. It's just, it's just look out, out for the fake. All right, here we go. They're going to go for it. It's deep from 47. And it's good. What a kick from 47 
yards out. And it is good. And just like that, it's a two-score game. It's 36 to 27 and a great field goal there. You know what? He, he got me on that one. I really didn't think they were going to go for it. And uh, he lined up from 47 yards and made it look easy. What a great kick, uh, you know, by their kicker. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that I wasn't sure if they were going to go for it or not. I certainly wasn't sure if they were going to make it or not. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have been surprised like you, Bill, if, if they had faked it because – that's that's far that's far for a high school kicker and uh very impressive there so it's a nine point lead now here for santa fe and uh it's gonna have to be very quick on the offensive side of the ball here or maybe on special teams here for cavalry christian if they hope to come back in this one and well i guess uh those three timeouts are gonna loom heavy if they can score quickly but they've got to because you you know under a minute you got to be a great quarterback to pull something like that off late in the game, and they don't have their starter out there. No, for sure. It would have been difficult even with their starter yeah. to come back. That was just a huge kick right there for, for their kicker because he put them out nine points, a uh, two-touchdown lead or, you know, two-possession lead. And uh, so we got to see it. I mean, if they they got to play some sort of return here and get it at least to midfield to, to really have a chance to come back to this game. So it's Derek Barnes and Alex Leonard deep to receive. And there's Hubbard with the kick, and it's a good one. And no, it isn't. It's out of bounds. More of a, uh, more of a hook than I thought on that one, and that's going to give decent field position here to the Cavalry Christian Warriors as they'll start from their own 35, first down and 10, 323 left on the clock. It's a nine-point ball game, and uh, they're going to have to get creative. You know, one thing we haven't seen yet in this game, Bill, and I think because we haven't seen it, might be effective here is we really haven't seen the screen play at all. No, you're right. I mean, this is a good time to do it. You know, they're probably the defense is probably going to maybe have a blitz, you know, try to go after the quarterback, especially him being a freshman. Um, let the, let the uh, defenders come to you and last second dump it to the running back. Uh, for a screen. That would be a great play. And he's trying to go downfield here. Nice pass out. Caught it about the 40, uh, put about the 40, and then brought down at about the 47 with a first down. So good first play of the drive. But you're right, Bill. Like you said, he's a freshman quarterback. And not only is, a, is he a freshman quarterback, but he's got to go downfield. And when you know you've got a quarterback who has to go downfield, that's when you like to bring pressure. And, uh, when you bring in pressure, that's when the screen play is most effective. And uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw it on this drive, even though we haven't seen it all night long from either of these clubs, which I'm a little bit surprised. The screen play uh, in high school is one I'm a big fan of. We've seen some work very well last season, and I'm a little surprised that neither of these teams has tried to run one tonight. Yeah, even, even a quick screen with a receiver or a slant, you know, um, I haven't, we haven't seen it in a reverse. You know, some of these trick plays to do a misdirection for the uh, for the defense. Haven't really seen any of that stuff. Oh, and absolutely no time there. As soon as he drops back, he's sacked. And again, it's the big fella, Matt St Stambrowski. Stambrowski, remember, made the big play on the punt, uh, on, the, on, the, on the awful snap on the punt for Cavalry before. And this time it's a big sack for Stambrowski. Yeah, that was a great play, play by the defense because uh, not only that, the most important thing is that the clock is still ticking. So um, they got to hurry up and get out there and make a play because um, they're getting ready to, uh, you know, make this game unreachable. And they're running players on and off the field as the clock continues to roll. Very close to two minutes left now in this one. It's a nine-point Santa Fe Catholic lead. And they're going to have to get something done very quickly if Calvary wants to come back in this one. Second down and 16 here. And we'll see what they've got going on. Two receivers to the right, one left. Two backs in the backfield. They are looking to throw. They throw it to Derek Barnes. He makes a play, then makes a guy miss. Gets to the outside. He's to the 40, 35, 30, and he drops the shoulder and brings a man down on his way out of bounds at about the 22-yard line, and that's the big play that Cavalry Christian needed. That's exactly right. You know, he broke a couple of tackles and took off. It was a great block by his other receiver out there to give him a few extra yards. 
Uh, more importantly, not only did it give him a few extra yards, but it let him get out of bounds and stop that clock without having to call a timeout. Yeah, very important there, and it's going to be the 23-yard line they're going to give him the spot at. But a, a very good play there, and uh, more impressively even, was the move to get back outside and pick up a bunch of extra yardage and that's what made that play so successful. So here we go, first and 10 now from the 23. Looking to pass again, and this time he's going to bring it down, but a great play to bring him down at the 20 there by number 40, Jake Brown, with a good play there, bringing down the freshman quarterback, number 12, Jeremy Wood. That was a great play by the uh, freshman quarterback. Uh, he, had, he had Strombrowski right there to tackle him for about a six-yard loss and uh, avoided him and ended up getting a gain of, uh, of about two yards. So uh, even though they didn't get many yards, uh, he did really save about a six-yard loss. So second down and eight. believe that was the first timeout taken here by Calvary Christian. Hasn't come off the scoreboard yet, but I'm almost positive that was. And there it is, down to two timeouts here for Calvary Christian. And uh, they need to score and score quickly because unless they can – successfully get an onside kick uh you know this talk a little bit bill about the strategy behind an onside kick i mean when it, what what was you know you hear about guys trying to kick the top of the ball you hear about guys trying to make sure they get a high what was your strategy when looking uh you know to, to try to pull off an onside kick i prayed <laughs> <laughs> i just prayed and hope it worked um you know there's a lot of different strategies behind it there's a lot of ways of kicking the ball and depending on uh, what type of onside kick your team wanted that at that particular time. But the most effective one is obviously the one that you hit the top of the ball straight down and, and give it that high hop because um, you pretty much know where it's going to be. Uh, you got one where you try to kick them almost uh, top three-quarter of the ball and uh, let it roll low until it makes that big high bounce. So there's a couple different ways, but, you know, the chances you get are slim to none, but the more you practice it, the better you get and uh, the better chance you give your team. And a flag here was there as a kicker, and, and and I don't know, is there a do you have a favorite kind of not onside kick, but the way you're going to kick the ball? Is there a way you felt like you were the I'm going to be the most successful if I kick it this way? Yeah, I think hitting the top of the ball. Uh, you know, when we worked on it with Martin and Santiago, uh, both my brothers, and you know, we'd work on you got to work on every aspect of the game. Uh, believe it or not, the uh, the onside kick's kind of tough because it's not your normal way of kicking, so it puts a lot of stress on your knee and your and your ankle. But uh, but I think kicking the top of the ball, making the high bounce, is really what we did really well. Here we go second down and hit as he thrown and it's picked off, and that's gonna do it here. He's going down the sideline at the 40, cuts it back inside 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and he gets uh, it knocked out of his hands, and it's in the end zone. And it's picked up, it looks like, by Cavalry Christian. It's a touchback. You know what? A great play. That was an interception by Martinez. And uh, the, the freshman quarterback didn't give up. He knew he took a big hit. And uh, he got his ball intercepted. But you know what? He ran about 80-something yards. And uh, it made a huge play to get a touchback and give him the ball back. Unbelievable. And that's the kind of hustle you love. That's the kind of play you love to see. You know, these kids know as much as they want to win tonight that it is preseason, and it would have been very easy to just sit back and go, oh, well, but he made that play. Granted, now they have the ball at the tw their own 20 as opposed to the other side of the football field, but it was over if that was a touchdown for Santa Fe, and at least there's some hope left now for Calvary Christian here with a minute 11 on the clock and two timeouts to still try to pull this one out after a great play there after the interception. Absolutely, and even if this game is over, you go back and look at that film and see the heart on this kids, uh, uh, that these kids are showing. Uh, what a great play by Jeremy Brown. And it's a keeper this time and brought down at about the 20. Little to no gain that time is the quarterback, Jeremy Brown. So we're under a minute left in this one, still around the 20-yard line in a two-possession game. You can pretty much say Santa Fe should be able to walk away with this one, but a great football game tonight. Two football teams that came out here and really struggled defensively in quarter number one, turned it around, made this thing a defensive battle for the next three quarters, and really gave us a great football game here in our first 
football game of the year on TampaLiveSports.com. It really was. It was what a great game, and, uh, you know, the defense stepped it up in the second half, and, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, that Allen um, Barnes is, you know, healthy next week and, and that he can come back and play. But, uh, you know, wish him well. Uh, but it was really, a, honestly, a, a good defensive battle in the second half of the game. Yeah, and really for three quarters, it just just very impressive, you know, to see 54 points put up in the in the first quarter. We were joking about whether or not we were going to see 100 for somebody. Neither of these teams with more than 36 points at the end of this one, uh, you know, it really got to be very impressed with what Santa Fe has done defensively. Because not only are they up by nine points, they haven't given up a point since quarter number one and they really have turned it around and both of these teams did you're right bill it's just a great display of heart and effort from both these clubs uh during a preseason game and, and they've certainly they might come away with a loss tonight but i think that uh all the people who showed up the thousands of people who showed up for the first game at the rock are not going to walk away disappointed there there shouldn't be anybody disappointed after the, what they just did out there and uh and really the effort that they give uh, too bad they got a loss, but you know what? They got they can watch film and uh, really make some adjustments for next week and uh, and get out there. Look at look at Barnes breaking hard. the tackle. He's down at about the 36. And unless they call a timeout, that will do it. And I think well they will call a timeout here with two seconds left on the clock so we'll get one more play tonight and uh an impressive one there by Derek Barnes we saw some impressive ones from Allen Barnes earlier in the game Derek very good on that one but two seconds on the clock one more play left here in this one and they're still playing hard that's just yeah. really great to see about these guys Thirty-six twenty-seven will likely be your final, barring a miracle play here on third and nine on the final play of the game. But again, uh, tonight really was a tale of two very impressive quarterbacks. One of them was a quarterback, a tailback, a linebacker, maybe played some safety, certainly excelled on special teams. B.J. Kanoff has really been impressive tonight. Alan Barnes was very impressive before a couple of injuries really slowed him down and eventually took him out of the game. But these two quarterbacks certainly uh, have these teams in a good position heading forward in 2011. Well, this sure won't be the last time we hear about either one of these two quarterbacks. I mean, we've been watching uh, high school football for a long time, and, and – uh, they're just two really great athletes, and um, you know we know that BJ's going to Purdue, but uh, I'm sure that Allen uh, is not far behind. I'm sure there's a lot of Division One schools. If if he hasn't committed to one or has one in mind, uh, there's going to be a lot of them coming after him. There we go. Final play of the game. We'll see what they can do. Jeremy Wood just absolutely swarmed over he tried to keep it going but he will be sacked in the end that'll be the end of the ball game that's jake brown with the sack but a very good football game here for our first game of the season and uh i've just been very impressed with both of these teams when it's 27 apiece after one quarter you think these guys are going to struggle defensively and then the rest of the game was a defensive brawl it was and you get to see both sides so uh, you know, you get to see what plays worked on offense in the first quarter. You try to bring those back in the upcoming games. And then you also get to see what works on defense. So you kind of get a little bit of everything. Uh, so, you know, now you got to just try to put them all together. And, uh, you know, hopefully these two teams have a good season from now on. All right, what a great game it was. Again, want to remind you, next Friday at 5.30, not quite sure where we'll be yet. Make sure and check the schedule. You want to follow us on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash Tampa Live Sports. Or you can follow me directly, twitter.com slash Pat D in Tampa. Certainly want to follow both of us to make sure you never miss what's coming up next on your home for live streaming sports in Tampa Bay. Next Thursday, I'm sorry, next Friday at 5.30, <laughs> Next Friday at 5.30, we'll see if I can get that one out. It's going to be Derek Sharp hosting for the first time ever here on TampaLiveSports.com. It'll be Derek Sharp and the High School Football Focus Show at 5.30. Derek will be calling a football game for us next Friday at 7 or 7.30. I'll be on the other one. We'll see if uh, Bill can make it out for another one. I know he's got a busy schedule, but we'll certainly see him, uh, if not next week, later on in the season. A great game out here tonight. Your final score again, 36 to 27 the Santa Fe Catholic Crimson Hawks on top of the Cavalry Christian Warriors and a great first 
game tonight. We've got volleyball coming your way Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. We've got uh, nothing on Thursday. Back to football next Friday night. Two games. If you want to know, again, follow us on Twitter. Check the schedule. Make sure you don't. Football is Monday volleyball is right here. Cavalry Christian, as a matter of fact, so if you're a Cavalry Christian fan, uh, Brent Lars just letting us know we'll be right back here on Monday night doing volleyball. And again, next Friday night, 5:30, the debut of the high school football focus show with Derek Sharp. 7:30, a couple more football games for everyone here at Cavalry Christian that helped us. Dylan, our guy Dylan and his whole crew did such an amazing job helping us put on this broadcast. Everyone here at Cavalry Christian that's helped us out certainly want to say thank you to those guys. Mike Tyree for helping us set everything up and run everything tonight. Our uh, All-American Eric Hagelin doing a little bit of crack reporting out there, finding out that BJ Knopf is going to Purdue as well as running our scoreboard tonight. Thank you to Eric Hagelin. Of course, Brent Lartz for running all over and getting everything set up at both locations. Again, a great game over at Shorecrest tonight as well. Also, Bill Grammatica coming out for the first time doing some color commentary for us. A great game tonight. And for everyone here at TampaLiveSports.com, I'm Pat Donovan. We'll see you next time right here on your home for live streaming sports in Tampa Bay. TLSTV.com.